me to here. During today's short lecture, I will briefly explain about the heart conduction system. We know that the heart is made of muscle which continuously contract and pump out the blood, carrying rich oxygen to rest of the body to provide energy. However, the whole heart contraction must be maintained by the electrical activity. So the electrical signal sends throughout the heart to make it to properly contract. So let's have a look how this electrical activity is conducted. Now, firstly, have a look about the whole structure of the heart. The heart includes four chambers. Um, now, the left side include left atrial and left ventricle, and right side include right atrial and right ventricle. Now, these two ventricles play a significant role in supplying blood. Left ventricle contract and pump out the blood through a order to rest of the body. Right ventricles contract and squeeze out the blood into this into the lung to receive oxygen. So they're very important. If the ventricles gets actually damaged or cannot pump properly, well, people will suffer heart attack and it is really life threatening. So now let's have a look for the electrical activity. Now, at the top of the um, right atrium, now there is a node. This node is called the SA node. The full name is sinoatrial node. So this node is located at the top of the right atrium, and then it actually acts like a natural pacemaker for the heart. So SA node initiate the electrical signal and then spread the signal around to atrium to let the left and right atrium to depolarize and contract. And then um, this signal is going to further um, reach, going to further travel down into the other node. Now this node actually located between um, right atrial and right ventricle. Now this node is called the AV node. The full name is atrial ventricular node. So this AV node receives the electrical signal sent from S a node and then this electrical signal will then be further traveled down into the whole pathway which is called the um, his Purkinje system. So this pathway includes three sections. The first electrical signal going to um, travel through this uh, first section called the his of bandle. And then from his of bandle it will be further divided into left and right bandle branch. From left and right bundle branch, the signal is going to further travel down to the end section, which is the uh, Purkinje fiber. And, and after the electrical signal travels all through this his of Purkinje system, it will make the uh, two ventricles to depolarize and then contract to pump out the blood. So this is how the whole electrical activity conducted. Now, when they now when we read the ECG, now ECG contains different waves. So let's first briefly talk about the ECG waves. Now ECG we have the first part is called the P wave. This is P wave. So P wave means that the um, S8 node start to send the electrical signal and to make the atrial to depolarize and then contract, and then the atrial after it is contracted, it will then um, send the blood. The blood will then flow down from the atrial to fill the ventricle. So P wave represents the depolarization and contraction of the atrial. So atrial depolarization. And then the second wave is QRS wave. So P wave and then Q R S wave. So Q R S. Now Q R S wave represents the second stage. That means the um, signal, the electrical signal sent down from AV node to the ventricles through this His and Purkinje system to let the ventricles to contract and depolarize. So QRS wave, QRS wave represents the depolarization of the um, ventricle.
ventricle depolarization makes the ventricle to contract and send out the blood. And then the next wave is a T wave. Now T wave is the last section of the ECG. T wave represents the end of the ventricle contraction. So the ventricle stops contraction, finishes the contraction, and then start to relax. And this relaxation is called the repolarization. So the ventricle repolarization. So that's that's the T wave. Now ventricle start to um, relax and the blood can fill back into the ventricles. Now we have different heart problems. Now if the SA node doesn't um, send out the electrical act a signal properly or it is very slow in sending the signal, so we can call it the sinus bradycardia. Bradycardia means slow heart, slow heart beat slow heartbeat. Or if the SA node actually sends signals too fast, now we can call it sinus tachycardia, like fast heartbeat. However, if the SA node doesn't send signal, and the signal actually come, come initiated from this AV node, which is called atrial ventricular, if the signal directly sent from the AV node, and uh, so this condition, and it actually sent down into the ventricle, um, actually, uh, if the electrical signal gets like interrupted and could not flow properly into this ventricle, could not spread properly down into the ventricle, so the, so the ventricle cannot contract properly. So there are two very serious conditions, which called the VT and VF could happen. So that means the VT called the ventricular, ventricle, ventricular tachycardia and VF is the ventricular fibrillation. So if the ventricle, the signal actually comes directly from the AV node, however it is interrupted and could not send properly down through this piece of Purkinje system, so it cannot make the ventricle to contract properly and then there will be less cardiac output then patient will have the um, VT or VF. Um, the heart will beat really, really fast and electrical signals actually become really uh, irregular and um, are really abnormal and chaotic. There's still electrical activities there, but it's really like abnormal. So patient's heart beats really fast and the ventricles cannot pump properly and there are very less cardiac output, very less blood can be pumped out and patient will suffer really serious um, lack of oxygen and then could even die from it. So heart attack could happen. So VT and VF, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation means the cut off or the abnormality of the electrical activities in the ventricle areas and making it lose the ability to pump. Now if they, actually some patients if this um, um, AV node actually send the um, electrical uh, signals, however, however, the signals actually get delayed. It doesn't send in the normal rate and it actually get delayed either, either in the left bundle branch or the right bundle branch. Then this patient could have left or right bundle branch block. That means either left or right bundle branch gets delayed, the signal, the signal is delayed when it travels down here. So left or right bundle branch actually sometimes not very serious. It just causes a delaying of the contraction for one ventricle. However, the ventricle can still contract, can still send out the blood. Um, so it's not as, so it's not very serious. So the most uh, serious conditions um, always these two types, so ventricular, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. So what can cause this to condition? Now what makes the electrical act activity gets interrupted in the ventricle area? That could, the most important cause is a coronary artery disease. Now we know that coronary artery is an artery stays on the top of the heart muscle to supply oxygen and blood to the heart muscle. If the coronary artery gets blocked, the heart muscle directly gets like damaged and lose the blood supply, lose oxygen. 
So when the heart muscle actually become dysfunction, cannot work properly, the heart muscle cannot contract, and also the electrical activity on the heart muscle also gets affected, so cannot maintain the good contraction. So coronary artery disease damages the heart muscle and makes patients easy to suffer VT or VF. Another problem could be um, the um, imbalance of the electrolyte, so the um, uh, deficiency of certain electrolytes in the blood, such as calcium and potassium or magnesium. Now, calcium, potassium, they are very important electrolytes, which um, helps the heart muscles to depolarize and repolarize. So, um, very important. So, the electrolytes in the body, especially calcium, potassium, maintains good uh, electrical uh, conduction for the heart, for the heart muscle. So, if patients are deficient in this um, certain electrolytes in the blood, it could trigger these um, um, heart conditions. And also like probably drug using, toxicity, um, this other condition like serious infection could all trigger the uh, VT or VF or heart attack as well. Um, so to make your heart to keep healthy, it's always good to Maintain a good diet, you know, prevent coronary artery disease, restrict the high amount of cholesterol in your food, restrict the um, salt intake um, to maintain good blood pressure, have enough exercise, um, always keep relaxed, um, have less stress, don't drink alcohol, don't smoke because smoking and alcohol could also damage your um, blood vessel and further could trigger the heart disease as well. Control your sugar intake, low sugar, especially if you have diabetes. So I really hope you now this little lecture could help you understand a little bit about how the um, electrical activity is maintained for the heart and um, how this ECG, how can you read the normal ECG. Thank you very much for listening.